Welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video and today's topic is a topic that I wanted to make its own video about and I've touched on this topic in previous videos but definitely wanted to give it its own video and you know as the title says it's don't invest in comic books and you're probably thinking like oh you got a YouTube banner saying invest in comic books and you always talk about investing in comic books so why do not invest in comic books and I just wanted to make this point because I think a couple commenters have made this point, you know, if you want to build wealth or get rich or whatever you want to call it, um, investing in comic books is not the best way to go about doing that. And, you know, I think it can be somewhat misleading by saying, you know, investing in comic books. I don't want you to think that I can mean you can get rich quick or get really rich by investing in comic books. What I really mean in a nutshell by investing in comic books is you're just bringing another level to collecting. Whereas collecting, you know, you're just kind of having fun and this and that. Whereas investing, you're thinking about price a lot. You're looking on the CGC census. Um, so, you know, we'll get into some of those details. But, you know, what would be the difference um, between, you know, a comic book investment and, like, a classic investment? To me, if you want to build wealth and get rich, you know, you know obtain financial freedom, whatever you want to call it, the best thing to invest in is stocks in real estate essentially. Stocks is good businesses, really good businesses. Real estate is real estate. Um, I know people who have done well in both. And, you know, the difference between, let's say, a stock and a comic book. Stocks, every day, a good stock, like, say, Home Depot. Every day, Home Depot is making tons of profits, no matter what. Every day, day in and day out, every day. I think, yeah, they're open on Sunday now. Uh, every, so every day, they're making profits hand over fist all the time. And over time, that wins. And when you own a share of Home Depot, they do pay a dividend as well. So some of that cash that they're making is directly, put, you know, back, given back to you. But a lot of that cash is retained, retained earnings. So, and then they use that cash to open more stores and make more money, more money. And then that's how the compounding effect happens. And that's how you can make really good money on stocks over time. And, you know, for investments, it usually takes at least five years to even start seeing a lot of the positive effects and stuff. So you got to be really disciplined and... But, you know, yeah, I really want to make this point, if you want to build wealth, don't invest in comic books. Um, you know, if you're just starting out, if you're young, and maybe you got a, just maybe got a good job, or, you know, for me, I had good jobs sort of while I was in university, and I still lived at home, so I took advantage of that, I was really disciplined, and I saved a lot of money during that time. So I'd recommend, if you could do that, you could do that, but if not, still working you know, service jobs for me, like I bartended a lot and, and I was a waiter. Um, you know, you make decent money doing that and if your your bills aren't too high, you can take advantage of that. But building wealth, um, you know, if you were in that position where you could save some money and maybe you were young, you know, invest in the stock market. Um, because, uh, yeah, really good businesses, that, that wins over time. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm sort of like a Warren Buffett disciple, so... Um, yeah, he's essentially, you know, became, I believe he's like the third or fourth richest person in the world now, just by like investing in the stock market pretty much. And you don't even need to get anywhere near his performance to like, just, you know, kind of have some financial freedom and have enough money so you don't have to, you know, worry about the next months or two bills or whatever it might be. So if you want to build wealth, can't stress enough, invest in stocks or real estate. Um, but still investing in comic books. Is still a thing I think because you know when you're investing in comic books I think you're bringing another level to the game so as a collector you're just kind of you know say you want a book as a collector you go online you see like three or four of them and you just buy the one that's like either the least priced or the, the one that looks the best like without any research you just buy um, so that's kind of a collector mentality but you know as a comic book investor you're trying to get a really good price for your books you're doing more research on prices. You're, you know, hoping to pick up books sort of at the lower end of your price range. You're looking to be really patient so you can wait for auctions rather than buying, you know, at, at like a full retail price, buy it now type of price. Um, yeah, and even, you know, getting a little bit more into the details, you're buying just essentially key issues and origins, whereas as a collector, a lot of times as a collector you might like to buy a lot of runs of things and a lot of raw runs that might be in like medium shape. Those end up being pretty hard to sell on the way out to be honest and 
Um, storage wise, I don't like to have a lot of storage, so that's another reason why I really just I'd rather just spend more money on one really good book. Um, and I think that's a bit of a difference between an investor and a collector. Is um, you know you have not you want a little bit less storage maybe, but you're spending more money on one book rather than buying like a hundred books for the same price. Um, yeah, let's talk about sort of you know in the sort of the 80s and 90s where I usually focus on my collecting because that's what I'm nostalgic for and that's what you know really love so that's what I really collect in the 80s and 90s and up to the modern age I would recommend CGC 9.8 books obviously that's what this channel is kind of about and and again if you're coming at it from an investment perspective an investor perspective 80s and 90s and you know uh, modern more modern books CGC 9.8s or 9.9s or 10s if you can afford those too. Um, just because the more rare the better and again when you're investing in books you'd probably rather pay up more for one book rather than have like three or four of other books at lower grades that are way less rare and likely harder to sell and, and, and might not go up if uh, over time these books might really take off if uh, you know, the bull case for comic books actually happens where they're so ingrained in our culture and they become so wanted and all the ones that are in the best shape will be the ones that collectors will be really, really willing to pay for. And people that are my age in 20, 30 years are going to have really good jobs and maybe they were a lawyer all their life and they have millions of dollars and they could probably afford something like this book. Maybe maybe a more of a mega key than this one. I, I really just like a Uncanny X-Men 142's cover. But, okay, that's... You know, kind of the point I just wanted to make today is, you know, even though I talk about investing in comic books, I don't want you to get the idea that you could get rich doing this or make tons of money doing this. I'm just talking about more bringing another level to the game and more research and more focus on price and all those things. And uh, if you want to get rich and if you want to, you know, make tons of money, that's awesome. But, you know, just invest in stocks or real estate. In the stock market, if you don't want to do much work, you know, invest in a low-cost index fund is what they're called. The S&P 500 index fund, all in one thing at a low cost. That's what, like, Warren Buffett recommends. And those index funds usually outperform all the mutual funds that are, like, run by professionals and you have to actually pay more fees for those. So that's what I would do if you didn't really want to do any work and you weren't interested in stocks but still wanted to invest and build wealth. That would be my advice is, yeah, and, uh, you know, save up money every check into those low cost index funds, the S&P 500 index funds. Um, or you could go real estate. I don't know too much about that, but I know people who've been really successful in that. And that's probably maybe a better way to go if you're more materialistic, because um, if you like, if you want to have a real big house and, um, you know, all the toys and maybe have quite a lot of debt on the side, too, that you can manage, though. Uh, because once you do real estate, you end up having good relationships with bankers and real estate brokers and things like that, and you can get more loans, and the longer it goes off, once your houses start to get paid off, you get a lot of income too. So yeah, real estate's a really good way to go too. Um, kind of depends what you're interested in, right? I'm like always been a stock geek, really interested in the stock market since I was like 17, and pretty much took over my own money when I was 19, like took it all out of mutual funds because I was kind of saving up in mutual funds since I was about 17, took it all over 19, started investing in, in you know, like individual businesses and things like that. Um, so that's what I would totally recommend to do if you wanted to build wealth. Comics should be a fun thing. And once you have those years of discipline of building wealth, or maybe you get a really good job and you can afford to buy these, you know, CGCs, uh, 9.8s on the side, um, or you get a really good job and you can go after, you know, those mega keys, those grails, like, uh, you know, Hulk 181 and First Punisher and even, you know, First Spider-Man and all those. That would be amazing, too, because that's a little bit of a different game, right? That is probably the best way you can invest in comic books. I'm not quite there yet financially, so, um, you know, buying a First Spider-Man, you know, a fir the First Captain America, First Black Panther, First Fantastic Four, First Amazing Spider-Man, all, like... If you did that, that's a really good way to invest in comics. And I think if you do it that way, you could sort of expect a little more appreciation over time. Whereas, you know, my way, not really expecting to make too, too much money on these 80s and 90s books over time. 
for me, I just I'm a bit fetishy about having these 9.8s, and I just like having you know the comic in perfect shape as it was the day it came out on the shelf. Like you know, if I picked it up and bought it that day and put it in a bag and board, like this is what the comic would look like. That's probably the biggest reason why I'm into CGC 9.8 books and kind of really just focus on those. Uh, but like investing in comic books, if you really want to get into it, buying those older grails, if you could afford them, is definitely the best way. Because I think you could, yeah, like I said, you could really expect those to go up similar to like a Van Gogh or a, a Picasso or something like that. Because it's getting to that point, I think, where, you know, Batman, Spider-Man, these superheroes are so ingrained in our culture where I think they're going to do great over time, a lot of the, especially those silver and golden age first appearances. Okay, I think that's enough ranting for today. I'm sure I missed something, but I did want to get, you know, it's this topic out on its own video because I made the point in prior videos and it's a really important point because I don't want anyone to kind of get their hopes up and think that because I have a comic book investing channel, I'm saying that you could get rich or, you know, make tons of money investing in comic books. Uh, yeah, if you like this video, please join the team and subscribe to Team CGC 9.8 here. Hit that bell, get all the latest notifications, and uh, had an internet issue last week, but yeah, we're, we're good with the internet now, and uh, probably be back to about five videos a week now. But thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you on the next video.